I recently released a video on my YouTube channel that showed you how to build a custom picker for SwiftUI. This was based on my CT Picker Swift package that I have now updated to work with the latest versions of SwiftUI. If you're not inclined to build your own version, then you may be interested in this package. It is so easy to install, and it has some additional features. So what is CT Picker? If you wish to limit your user to picking from an array of strings, then one of the default SwiftUI pickers may meet your needs. However, as the number of entries grow, these controls may not be very efficient. With CT Picker, you can present the user with a list of all options, but with a filter text field that will filter as you type to zoom in on the preferred value. If the value is not available, there's also the optional Add button to allow your users to add to the data source of options. Take a look at this example. Tapping on the first text field presents a list of food items in a scrolling list. You can type in the filter field to locate an item, then tap on it to select it. Tapping on the second text field brings up a list of beverages. I don't see my favorite sprite, so I can type it in and then tap the plus button to add it to my array, so that the next time I tap on the field, it will be an option. It also looks good in dark mode. One of the things that makes CT Picker different is that it's presented over your current view, and your current view is still visible in the background. The best way to explain how to implement CT Picker is to work through an example of how to install and add CT Picker to a view. This example is a text field that asks the user to enter a food item. I should note, however, that this starter project requires Xcode 12 or later as I'm going to implement a couple of new features of iOS 14. CT Picker itself is completely compatible with iOS 13. It's just that this starter project is going to use some new features. The first thing we have to do is install the Swift package. This is incredibly easy. So much easier than installing a CocoaPod. Within your project, choose File, Swift Packages, Add Package Dependency. At the next screen, enter the URL for your package, and in my case, it's github.com slash Stuart Lynch slash ctpicker underscore SwiftUI. Choose the latest available version, and then add the package to your target. You now have the dependency installed and are ready to import ctpicker. You can see the files that have been added here. Setting up your project to use this solution is pretty straightforward. In the view where you're going to implement CT Picker on your text field, import CT Picker. Next, ensure that your view conforms to the CT Picker protocol. This will require you to add a function for updating your array. I'm going to let Xcode generate the stub for me, and I'll move it down to the end of my struct. If you're not going to allow updates, you can just leave the body empty, but more on this later. The next step is to create the presentation variable that when set to true will present the picker. As it will be changed in the view, it must be created as an at state variable with an initial value of false. CT picker uses a text field in its CT picker text view, and for that we'll need to bind a string variable. But since we already have a text field in place here, I've got one defined, so I'll leave that one. Later, when we add another field, we'll have to create one. When presenting the CT Picker view, you'll be asked to pass in an array of strings. If you're going to allow users to be able to modify the array, it will have to be defined as an add state variable. We're going to do that. So I'll create an add state variable called food array, and I'll just add some food items as the default. Later on, I'll show you how you can work with properties of objects. Every CT Picker text field must have a tag associated with it, so that you'll be able to present the correct picker and save updates if you have more than one picker on your view. So we'll create an at state tag variable and default it to the integer one. The CT Picker text view is a view that will be presented on top of the existing view. To allow this, we need to surround the existing view, including our navigation view, in a Z stack. 
Now I can replace my text field with my CT Picker text view. This view requires that you pass in a binding to your present picker and a field string state variable, along with some placeholder text. Also a binding to the tag state variable and a selected tag value for your CT picker view. If you only have one text field, you can set the selected tag to one. All of the bindings are the ones that we've just defined. You can now add as the second item in the Z stack a conditional presentation of the CT picker view. The condition will be whenever our present picker boolean value is set to true. The CT picker view requires three parameters, two of which are state variables plus our array of strings. If you run your app now, you'll find that it is indeed a functional picker. I can tap on the field to present the picker and tap to select one. I can also filter to reduce the list, then select the item. However, we have not yet added any ability to add items. To add items, you need to do two things. First, you need to add the save updates argument when presenting CT Picker. And for this, we'll just pass it the save updates function that our protocol required. When we add an item to CT Picker view, the save updates function is executed with a string new item argument. And it's up to you to add code that will update your array with this new item, and if required, persist the data. In our case, this is straightforward as we have an array of strings, so I can just append the new item. Now, if you are going to persist this data for use after a new launch, you will have to do that here. And I'll show you an example shortly. If you run the application now, you'll see that the picker has an add button on the top right. If you enter a value into the filter field that does not match any of the existing items, like bananas, you can tap on the plus button to call the save updates function, which will append that to the array. If you tap the field again, you'll see your new entry in the selection list. When the CT picker dismisses, it's immediate. There's no smooth animation in the dismissal. I believe this is a bug in Swift UI, but there is a quick fix. Right after your CT picker view has been created, but still within the if presenter block, add a Z index of one as a modifier. There are three optional parameters that you can pass to the CT picker view. By default, the items in your array are sorted alphabetically. If you wish to keep the sort order of your string array as is, you can pass in the optional parameter no sort true. This must be added after the save updates parameter, if you have one, and if not, it just follows the items parameter. Now when I run the app, I see my food items aren't sorted. You can also change the color of the top button bar of the CT picker view and the tint of the buttons and we can change one or both. The easiest way to do this is to create an instance of CTP colors at the top of your struct and include one or both of the two properties, which are UI color. For example, let's change the background color to black and the tint color for our buttons to be orange. Now you can add this as the parameter to your CT picker view. The final option is to change one or more of the strings used in CT Picker View. The default values are shown here. As with the CTP colors, you can create an instance of CTP strings and change one or more of the properties. For example, if all you want to do is change the cancel button title property, then you can create your CTP strings instance like this. And we'll change ours to dismiss instead of cancel. As with CTP colors, we add the option to our CT picker view. Let me run this on the simulator now. I get a nice smooth transition when I tap on the field and notice that the cancel button is now dismiss and I have a black background with orange buttons. Tapping on the dismiss button does a nice smooth transition to dismiss the picker view. In the next section, we'll cover how you can use a class defined as an observable object with some computed properties to extract and update items 
and be able to include more than one picker on a view. In the starter project, there's a folder called Groceries. And in this folder, there are, are two files. There's a model for a grocery item that is a codable struct containing an ID, a name property, and a category, which is an enum that is either food or beverage. I've also included a groceries view model class. This is an observable object that has a new app storage property called groceries JSON that's going to be used to store an encoded version of our groceries list in the user defaults using the key groceries. This is one of the new features of iOS 14. The class has a published property called groceries, which is an array of those grocery objects. I've created two computed variables, one that will extract all the groceries that are food items in an array of strings, and the other will do a similar thing for extracting all of the beverages. There are also two functions that will accept a new item and append to the groceries array, and then call another function called store groceries, which writes the updated encoded data to our app storage property, and thus to the key of groceries in the user defaults. When we initialize this view model, it first checks to see if anything is in that app storage variable, or if it's an empty string. And if there is, it decodes the groceries and sets up our groceries array. If it's an empty string, I simply load in some sample array and store it in user defaults for the next launch. First thing then is to remove our old food array and replace this with an at state object. This is another new feature of iOS 14, and we'll initialize it with our view model. We'll call it groceries VM. This means now that I have access to all of the properties and all of the functions in that view model. So I can change my items from food array to the groceries VM dot food array. And in my save updates function, I can now call the new food item function from the groceries view model, passing in that new item and then it will save it back to user defaults. I can run this in preview where I'll add a new item, call it bananas, and it gets added to our array. I'll stop the preview and run it again, and I see bananas has persisted, even in the preview. Let's add a second picker for beverages. I'll just copy and paste my CT picker text view as a second item in the vStack. Now I will need a new state variable to bind to this text view, so I'll call it beverage and initialize it as an empty string. So in our second CT picker text view, I'll change $food to $beverage and I'll update the placeholder text. And I'll give it a tag of two. I have two pickers now to present, so I'll need to check the tag. If tag is equal to one, I'll present the first picker as before. Else, let me copy and paste here, I must be at the second tag, so I'll change the picker field to dollar beverage. The items now will be groceries vm dot beverage array and I'm going to take out the no sort option. And since we're wanting to persist both of these items, I'll have to specify in the save function which of our update functions to call. If tag is equal to one, I'll use the existing function, else I'll call the new beverage item function. Let me run this now in the simulator. I'll tap on the first field, and add bananas. I'll tap on the second and add apple juice. Notice that these items have been added and in the case of the second one, sorted alphabetically. Now let me stop and rerun the app. When I tap on our fields, I see that those items we added in our last session are still there. They were saved user defaults 
and load it again when the app launched. And it looks great in dark mode as well. I hope you see how easy it is then to implement your own CT picker within your own projects using this Swift package.